Hey guys, welcome to Houdini Hudono, the simulation edition. <laughs> this is a 10 part mini tutorial series. Uh, it's primarily targeted for beginners, um, but not absolute beginners. So if you are not familiar with uh, Houdini UI and stuff like that, you can go check out this uh, tutorial series online that's very helpful called Houdini Isn't Scary. It does an excellent job at explaining the absolute basics, the UI and stuff like that. And after you're done with that, you can then come back here and follow along, right? I plan to keep this series very much to the point, but don't worry, I will do every setup from scratch and all the rationale will be explained, right? And I will try to keep it short because everybody is busy. As much as possible, I'll keep the runtime of this video about 10 to 15 minutes. I will try to show you guys the more cost-effective setups, right? They are quick to simulate, look cool so that, you know, we all feel a bit more encouraged. And even if you don't have the best computer resources, you should be able to run some light simulations like this. From then on, it's up to you to take the deep dive, right? Welcome to the series. Uh, let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, something like this. Let's start with an empty scene. Firstly, in Houdini, let's uh, set our timeline to 100 frames because that's all we need. And then uh, drop down a geometry node, dive inside and let's drop down the grid. And we'll size down the grid to just one by one world units. Just change this to one by one. From there, we will scatter some points for us to emit some particles. Um, I will just need 50 of them, that's enough. And then I'm just gonna drop down a pop net. So by default, uh, in the geometry context, when you create a pop net, it immediately creates uh, some nodes inside for you to run a simulation. With the fact that we scattered some points already, uh, you will notice that the pop net actually does nothing over here. That's because in our birth tab, the pop source node, we got a sorry, our source tab, we got to ensure that we will create particles from all existing points. And on the birth tab, we will just have to say that uh, this only happens on the first frame. So I'll type dollar current frame equals to one. So if this condition is met when it's on frame one, it will create some particles. Um, we still don't see anything because um, there's, there's no forces in the world. So let's drop down a pop wind and wire in between the source and the solver and just turn up the upward velocity by 1 on the y-axis and 1 on the noise. Then we should be able to see some particles generated like this. And from there, I will drop down a trail node um, and set my trail length to 100. So what this does is it basically kind of remembers the past 100 steps. The simulation is now playing back a little bit fast, so let me click on this bottom left icon over here to ensure that it's rendering real-time. So this is representational of our real-time speed. And next, um, I would like to have some colors. So attribute randomize helps us to do that while after the scatter. And by default, it's randomizing the CD, which is the color diffuse of every point. So that's uh, convenient. And on the trail node, I'm going to choose connect as polygons. This draws a polygon on each spline and then it draws a closed polygon. So we don't want that. Let's uh, uncheck this closed rows so we get a single line. Next, all we have to do is to wire down a poly wire. And we are almost done, right? So we can see this. So how do we achieve a varying length along the curve? It's uh, over here on the wire radius. Now we set it to a uniform value of 0 0.1. We can set it to an attribute instead. The usual attribute that we use to define uh, point scale is a p-scale. So now uh, everything has disappeared and there's an exclamation mark here saying that there's some warning, don't panic. It just says that it cannot find p-scale obviously because we haven't defined it yet. So how do we do that? We can drop down a point wrangle node right before and put down here f at p-scale equals 0 0.1. Okay, with that, uh, we have uh, essentially uh, got back to the same point as before, except that now I can do fancy stuff over here. Right? I can write custom stuff to define my p-scale. Um, to do that, I need to gather the value along the curve, which the resample node allows us to do that. Um, man, there are many nodes in Houdini that has multiple functions, and sometimes it's not very apparent what some of the hidden functions that they have, right? So the resample node, other than the fact that it can resample some curves, which is its primary function, you can see here if there are a certain number of dots over here. On the resample, I can 
reduce the number of dots or increase the number of dots if I want to. It's resampling the curve. However, I do not want to use this function, so I turn it off and check curve u attribute. So what does this curve u attribute output? Um, we can visualize this um, by pressing the X on the keyboard and come here and type curve u. Right? So it actually gives me a value uh, from 0 to 1. You can see that the bottom of the curve is a little bit darker here. So we can then remap this value. right? So you do not need this visualize node. It's just for me to explain the concept to you. If we equate this to the curve u attribute like this, then you see that it goes from 0 to 1. And our poly wire will then be 0 to 1, which results in something very thick. So I'll give it a multiply here, a multiply by 0 0.1, and it's not so thick. So we have successfully varied the width of the curve along its length, uh, except that uh, we don't have much control, right? So there is a function called chramp, and we give our ramp a name, p scale, and then we close this function. So what this does is um, this chramp function accepts two inputs, one being the name of the UI that you're going to generate, and the second input separated by a comma is the information that you want to manipulate. right? So when I press this button now, it gives me this, and I can now woohoo adjust the profile of this curve. right? So it's now time to make the chandle shape. Um, select these two handles over here, change to B-spline, which allows for a smoother in-between. Then make something bubbles like this. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. And this 0 0.1 is kind of like cumbersome to go like 0 0.2 and maybe 0 0.15. So it's um, uh, as a convenience factor, there's another um, UI slider that we can use called um, CHF. And this is easier. It takes in only one input, which is the name of your UI. So I shall just call this a p-scale multiplier like this. And then we have a slider here. Right? So now it's uh, much more convenient. You can see that there are some intersections here. Um, this is uh, a limitation of this setup, um, but it's fine. You know, uh, There are two ways to get around it. One is you can delete the geometry after. Um, the other way is to have more particles so that our uh, frame is such that you cannot tell. You know, uh, Most of, oftentimes we just cheat our way through this. So on the poly wire, you can uh, increase to eight divisions so that they look bubbles like this. And you might see that there are some, um, there may be some artifacts from the shading normals. And you can solve that by dropping down a normal node and just increase the cusp angle to like 100, something like this. Right. Find a good angle and then you can render. Right. So I will drop down a null node, say out chendo. And right outside, I'll rename my Joe setup to setup and hide it and create another Joe node. This is just good practice because like things like CryptoMat and you can control the subdivisions uh, through your renderer when it's a separate object. Let's call this Chandle. Dive inside, drop down object merge and pick up the object from the setup over here. Right With this, um, we can render. So um, that's it. I hope this is helpful and um, if you want to see how this is set up, I, I use Redshift. I'm not sure if uh, you guys will be interested to see the rendering setup in Redshift. Um, I'm guessing that most of you might not have access to Redshift. So um, let me know in the comments uh, if you would like to see how this is set up in Redshift or in Mantra um, to achieve a, a similar result and I can do an extension to this video. Otherwise, uh, thanks for your time and um, so I'll plan to upload um, a new part to this series every Friday, Singapore time at 6pm and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, um, if you would like to have uh, this setup file, um, you can just uh, go to Instagram and follow me there. Um, no, not follow me, but you, can, you don't have to follow me, <laughs> but you can just uh, DM me over there and I'll send you the file. I'll give you a link to the file. Yep, so I'll see you next Friday. Bye.